Hi folks, this video is going to be a little bit different than the ones we have done here at the parish in the past. And where this video comes from is actually from some of the comments we received during our synod meetings that we had this past spring. And one of the things that we heard was that we needed to do a little bit better job on communication. So this is a chance for many of our parish staff people to communicate directly with you on not just our programming, but on the, the kind of the roots of why we're doing certain things and what we hope to achieve and where we hope to go as a parish. Any pastor who's been around for more than six months can tell you one definitive thing about their parish. And that is that everybody wants a bulletin and virtually no one ever reads it. I don't say that flippantly, I'm totally honest, but that's okay. We're going to keep trying to communicate things as best we can. One thing that I want to share with you about all this video, because it's all kind of funneling into one thing, is that we're trying to create a parish that is at its best. And we're pretty close now. You all are wonderful people with many gifts and a loving spirit. But our focus this year is going to be a little bit transitional if you will. You can eat a meal at a restaurant and have a great meal, or you can eat a meal at home and again have a great meal, but there's a difference. When you're done at the restaurant, you pay your tab, you walk out and you have zero obligation to the other people that were in the restaurant. When you eat a meal at home, when you're done, perhaps you have a role to play. If it's to wash dishes or pick up the table or anything like that. But you also have other obligations. You have obligations to those people you just ate with to listen to them and to be connected to them and to be responsible for them and there to be responsible for you. That's what creates a home. And there's a big difference between a restaurant and a home. The church, when it doesn't function that well, operates much more like the restaurant or perhaps even a specialty store where people show up when they need certain things. I need to get married. I need to get baptized. I need to have my parents' or grandparents' funeral. I need to educate my children. And even sometimes, I just need to feel God's grace. But when we see it as a store, it's not complete because we don't have an obligation towards those we gather with. So throughout this coming year, we're gonna to try to work really hard around our theme of being home, that we receive things here, but we also give back by having responsibilities for each other. And that's really central to what we're about. More information is gonna to continue to come to you as time goes on. And you're going to get a chance to learn a little bit more about the programming and things we're doing here as a parish. I would suggest you even hang on to this video, file it away in one of your email files. And if you have questions, you can pull it up and figure out who it is you need to talk to or even where you need to go to be a part of something. Because it's all pretty important. I want to end by quoting Justin Rose, our parish youth director, not the golfer, if some of you may be thinking. But here's the thing, when a parish is at its best, we feel at home and we feel connected to one another and we feel like we belong. And that's what we desire for our parish. The financial health of the parish is strong. At the end of June, our net assets and cash balances grew versus last year. Weekend collections were higher than budget and are very close to pre-pandemic levels. Our parishioners have continued to be very supportive. A couple of areas I want to provide more information on, namely our major capital and maintenance improvements, as well as our Christian services ministry. An effort to be good stewards of what we have been given, the parish leadership along with Finance Council, develop plans. As part of our long-term planning, we have made significant updates to the church and parish facilities. Over the last couple of years, we replaced the church roof, refinished the church pews and floors, 
made repairs to concrete walkways and entrances, and several other smaller improvements. Next month, we'll be replacing our 16-year-old carpet in the church. These investments are fully funded. This is because our parish tradition of putting monies aside each week in a separate major expenditures fund. Many of you also know we earmark 10% of our weekend collections to our Christian Service Ministry, a ministry that provides emergency assistance payments for rent, utilities, water, and car repair bills to many county residents in need. Most of the assistance payments average $120 per claim and in total, approximately 30,000 a year. We have two very dedicated parishioners, Jane and Pete, who handle these claims. We're very proud to be among the local churches and organizations in Midland that offer this support to our sisters and brothers in need. We also respond to local emergencies such as floods, fires, and natural disasters. In addition, we pay out approximately 125,000 dollars each year to 45 to 55 local and global nonprofit organizations for projects they are undertaking to help the poor and needy. The grant payments range from 500 to 5,000. Our parish has been doing this for over 40 years and have awarded over $3 million over that time. Again, we are very grateful to our generous parishioners for their support to allow this parish to thrive, but also to help the broader community. First off, I am grateful that liturgy has gotten back to somewhat normal. In the last year, we were happy to bring back cantors, choir, and instrumentalists for our Sunday Masses. Since the closures and restrictions have lifted, I have introduced three new songs this year, along with a couple new mass uh, settings. My goal is to continue growing our repertoire by introducing new music every couple months so we can build and maintain the songs this parish loves. Also, we hope to see our liturgical ministries grow this year. We are looking at altar servers, hospitality ministers, lectors, Eucharistic ministers, and cantors. Although we have brought back altar servers, our numbers of youth participating have been light. If your child is interested in being an altar server, please contact the parish office. The requirements are the child has to be in third grade or higher. We also are continually looking for hospitality ministers for all masses. This is a pretty simple job. Saying hello as your fellow parishioners walk in, handing them a bulletin and song sheet, just things like that. If you have an interest in being a lector or Eucharistic minister, also contact the parish office and let us know, and we will happily walk you through the training process for all these ministries. When we all participate in Mass, it makes our worship more alive. So I invite everyone to pray and ask God how you might use your gifts at Mass. wide faith formation theme for last year was the big reveal and programming for everyone from our four-year-olds to our 104 year olds focused on how God continually reveals himself to us through sacred scripture and how our stories are a continuation of God's great love story for all people of all time through a variety of formation opportunities we came to understand more fully that to be a disciple of Jesus means to carry on his mission of forgiveness, love, compassion, and mercy in the world. In addition to our regularly scheduled adult faith formation scripture study courses like afternoon Bible break and Wednesday morning scripture study, special offerings such as the Bible blueprint, the Bible timeline, journaling workshops, visual faith scripture and story sharing sessions, and the Chosen video series invited us to dive deeper into God's big story as well as our own stories to experience how the two are intimately connected. This year, our faith formation theme is We're Home, and it was born out of the isolation we experienced as a result of the pandemic. 
Blessed Sacrament strives to provide a place of belonging for everyone who comes through the doors, a place where people are greeted by smiling faces, where they can relax and sit a spell, where they hear the best stories and share a meal at the family Thanksgiving table, a place where they can say, I'm home. And our home isn't just any old home, it's a Catholic home. And so this year's programming for everyone from four to 104 will be centered around all things Catholic. I'm particularly looking forward to Father Rob's presentation in November about the Eucharist and the family Thanksgiving table and the great meal we're gonna serve with it. New to the Faith Formation Parish calendar this year are our whole community parish family fun events such as dinner and a movie, a gingerbread house decorating contest, a game night with a euchre tournament and bingo, as well as a talent show in February. Everyone is invited to come and help us build a true sense of family by simply being together and having fun. And we've got some more great news. Women's Christ Renews is back this year with a new team and a weekend being hosted in April. One of the outcomes of both the men's and women's weekends is that bonds of trust and belonging are formed and participants naturally become a small faith community. But the Christ Renews process isn't the only way that small faith groups are formed. We're very excited to announce that we are launching a small faith group initiative during the six weeks of Lent. In a parish as large as Blessed Sacrament, it's easy to feel like you're in number, just another person in a pew, and we recognize that it's often difficult to take those first steps to join in to be part of all of the programming and ministry opportunities. Small faith groups offer an immediate sense of belonging and serve as connection points to the larger parish. They are places where we can make friends and make a difference as we grow as disciples of Jesus. Later in the fall, we're sending out a survey about the type of small faith group experience that might interest you. Groups can be formed based on interests, ages and stages of life, or topics of study and discussion. We currently have small faith groups that have been meeting for 10 or more years, but it's been 17 years since we have intentionally invited everyone to become part of one. I encourage each of you to fill out the survey when you see it and prayerfully consider how God might be calling you to participate in this endeavor as prayer support, a participant, or maybe even a small group host or leader. It takes all of us to build a sense of home here at Blessed Sacrament, and I'm inviting everybody to come and join us. Come and see. The door's open. Come on in, because when we say we're home, we mean so much more then this place feels like home. We mean we are home to each other. In high school formation last year, we enjoyed our first semi-normal year since the beginning of COVID. With a full slate of programs, including Sunday night small groups, the youth to youth retreat team, and an outreach mission trip. Sunday small groups met by grades to cover topics on relationships, personal identity, mental health, teen chosen topics on Christianity and social media, living like a Christian outside the church, modern saints, and lots more. Each session, the teens met with peers, played games, created projects, discussed important topics, and of course, ate lots of snacks. The youth to youth team met twice a month to plan the teen-led retreat in April. Our meetings incorporated the gifts and talents of 17 teen members and seven adult members to divide and design prayers, games, witness talks, and everything else it takes to make a retreat happen. As always, once we arrived at the retreat center in Clare, the youth leaders took over and did an amazing job running each activity for the 40 teens who went on the retreat. The outreach team held several fundraisers throughout the year, including a pasta dinner, Christmas wreath sales, pop can collection, and Easter flower sales. The team also served the parish at the Halloween trunk or treat, exam snack packs, 
shoveling snow for parishioners during the winter months, and setting up the graduation mass and breakfast for the seniors and their families. Thanks to their hard work, the team raised thousands of dollars to help pay for our year-end trip to Elliott County, Kentucky, as well as serving our community here in Midland. On our trip, the team encountered, thankfully, amazing weather and a beautiful and challenging work site where we cleaned overgrown trails and riverbeds, helped build a house and outhouse, and planted a garden for the entire community to have to have fresh produce for the entire year. Looking ahead at this year, I'm thrilled to welcome all teens to enjoy any and all of our wonderful high school programs. Per the Synod feedback and survey requests, Sunday night small groups will begin this year by meeting as one large group before breaking off into grade level groups. The groups will cover topics by Father Mike Schmitz, Chris Paget, and tons of amazing speakers. We want to help the teens learn about our Catholic family and how they can have a personal relationship with Christ. Small groups will also dive into the history of Christianity and see the physical sites connected to the locations and stories we know from the Bible. We will look at our church family tree and see how we fit on the branches. All that while, of course, enjoying lots of snacks, games, and times with friends. Youth to youth team meetings will kick off in September with a team thrilled to prepare an amazing spring retreat. As much as the team gets out of the planning, which is a lot, I will never grow tired of hearing parents and adults rave about the joy they see in the teens who come back from the retreat. These young people bring life-altering moments to their family and friends. Joining this team or going on this retreat will help you become a better person or give you the chance to serve the peers in our church. Speaking of service, I'm thrilled to announce for the first time that the high school outreach team is heading to Cleveland, Ohio in June 2023. We will be heading to the city to assist in home repairs, collecting and sorting food and clothing for community and donation centers, planting large community gardens for urban neighborhoods. In order to pay for the cost of the trip, the team will be holding our annual fundraisers. We will also continue our parish and community service projects to help the Midland area. The outreach team takes Matthew 25 to heart. We aim to serve those in our world, as Jesus commanded us, to feed the hungry and thirsty, to clothe the naked, and to visit the sick. Regardless of your interests, we have something for you. If you're a high school student, we want you here. If you're a parent, grandparent, or guardian, we want you here as part of these groups. You are an integral part of this community, and you make our parish family feel like a parish home. Jesus says wherever there are two or three, I am with them. He also saw the value in every person and welcomed everyone to him. That is what it means to be a family at Blessed Sacrament. You make us a stronger family. You make our parish home whole. In our Sunday program last year, the middle schoolers went through salvation history. So each week we heard a story from the Bible in a large group and then the kids split off into their grade levels to talk about what stood out to them in the story. Then they did an activity together that just drove home the message of the story. One of my favorite lessons was the Passover from Egypt. And in that lesson, the kids actually put red paint over the door of their classrooms, and then they got to actually participate in a Seder meal. So the kids really lived the stories last year. Every week, they also had a game in the gym that went along with the story. They had a themed snack, and they had art time. Every Sunday, we started with a blank canvas, and each grade took 20 minutes to add something to the painting um, to depict the story that they heard at the beginning of the lesson. 
One grade per week was also in charge of summarizing the story in their own words. And then at the end of the year, we printed their stories and their art in a book. What? It turned out so beautiful. I'm so proud of them. But as awesome as that was, I am so excited for this year. We're focusing on all things Catholic. So we're going through the Mass, the Sacraments, the Creed, and the Saints. We're diving into these topics in a very hands-on way. For example, when we talk about the Sacrament of Reconciliation, the kids then have an opportunity to participate in that sacrament. Our very first lesson of the year is a scavenger hunt in the church. So the kids get to explore the rooms. They get to see where the vestments are stored. They see the things that we use during mass. We'll talk about the relics that are in the altar and it's so much fun. So that is our Sunday program. We also have an after school program that is completely service based. So we meet weekly and we've done all sorts of things like a random acts of kindness marathon. Uh, we've sorted clothes at the shelter house resale shop and we've delivered hot chocolate to the crossing guards in the winter. So we'll be getting into more of that fun this year as well. So if you have a middle schooler who likes to have fun and wants to grow closer to Jesus, sign them up for youth ministry. And if you are a parent, a grandparent, or even if you do not have a middle schooler, Come and see all the fun that we're having at Youth Ministry. In elementary faith formation last year, for our big reveal theme, we had 72 kids enrolled in preschool through fifth grade. We learned about how God reveals himself in salvation history from creation through Pentecost and today. In the classrooms, preschool and kindergarten learned about the gospel story for each Sunday, while first and second graders learned about God's love for us in the Mass, Sacraments, Mary, and Prayer. Third, fourth, and fifth graders dove into salvation history and learned about all the heroes of the Bible, Old Testament and New. Once a month, we invited families of our faith formation kids to join us, and we spent our class time with crafts, games, and a lesson for all ages. Each week, every kid in our program made and brought home a Jesse tree ornament for the Bible story of the day. Even though the Jesse tree traditionally ends with the Holy Family at Christmas, we continued the project into the new year with Jesus' followers and family, and finished with Jesus' modern-day followers, us. Children's Liturgy of the Word videos available on our parish YouTube page allowed kids to participate in this favorite activity while staying socially distanced. Clips of kids doing the first reading and prayer of the faithful response were integrated into the videos, making them more personal. In November, 22nd, 3rd, and 4th graders made their first reconciliation as part of our Jesus Experience Day retreat. And on a beautiful May weekend, they celebrated First Eucharist with our community at our Saturday and Sunday Masses. In June, we joined the other Midland area Catholic churches for a vacation Bible school out at Assumption, with 80 kids and 46 volunteers from all three parishes. Our theme for the year was monumental, celebrating God's greatness, and we learned about God's monumental love for us. We're so excited to begin our We're Home theme for the year. In our classrooms, we'll be focusing on the sacraments and the mass, both of which ground us in our Catholic faith and make it our home. We're once again inviting our Faith Formation families to one class session each month for crafts, games, snacks, and family fellowship, and a lesson for all ages. We're bringing back two parish family favorites. In October and November, everyone in our parish family is invited to join us for our annual trunk or treat and Advent wreath making events. I don't know about your family, but in my home, we play games. So this year, the Faith Formation team has created a fantastic church card game. From preschool through high school, kids and teens of all ages are invited to participate. Throughout the year, kids can collect saint cards, prayer cards, and life in the church cards as they come to class, or learn and do church things. They play using their own deck of collected cards. The goal is to be the first person to put a saint card in each of seven categories in the game board in front of them. As an extra bonus, one of our high schoolers is creating an online version of the game that can be downloaded and played on an iPad. We are super proud of this game and can't wait to share it with our Faith Formation families this year. 
We're once again looking forward to celebrating First Reconciliation and First Eucharist with our second graders this year. I always look forward to the beaming faces returning from celebrating the sacraments. One sweet boy during our First Reconciliation retreat last year came back from the sacrament and told me, it was so awesome. And that's what I hope for every kid who comes through our sacramental prep programs. Here at Blessed Sacrament, they are definitely so awesome. The Sacrament of Confirmation, after two years of study by the bishop and an advisory committee, has been moved to middle school age across the Saginaw Diocese. Details on the new program are still being worked out. We're glad to be bringing Children's Liturgy of the Word back to the church this year. During 11 o'clock Mass, kids will be dismissed after the introductory rites to gather in the vestibules by the Ashman Road entrance to the church. They'll hear the readings and Gospels explained in kid-friendly terms and celebrate God together with some kid-favorite songs. And let's not forget about Vacation Bible School. We've already begun making plans with the other Midland area churches for next year's Vacation Bible School. Next summer's theme will be Stellar, Shine Jesus' as Light. We're so excited to be taking VBS to space. Children's Faith Formation for this year is jam-packed with love, joy, and Jesus, and I can't wait to get started. If you're excited too, register your kids on our parish website if you haven't already, and join me as a volunteer. Parents, grandparents, godparents, and any members of our parish family who love kids are welcome to volunteer. You won't want to miss a thing. As the newest member of the Faith Formation team, I'm looking forward to continuing my journey at Blessed Sacrament as a coordinator of young adult and family life. I think Blessed Sacrament does a great job at celebrating baptisms. Currently, we are offering classes once a month for those that need it. Every child baptized at Blessed Sacrament receives a gift from the parish in the form of a handmade blanket from our parishioners. If you are interested in making a blanket, please let us know. As of August 1st, each child will receive a birthday baptism card in the mail for the first three years after their baptism. It is a convenient reminder, but we also hope it helps you feel connected to your Blessed Sacrament family. For our young families, Busy Bags are back and are a great parent tool to use as your child is learning about church. We all enjoy watching children grow up in the church. Come to Mass, grab a busy bag, and share your children with us as we all share in the Eucharist together. For our young adults, we are sending periodic flock notes to help them know and feel connected to the parish and our community. We are offering marriage prep classes in Midland and online. This is new this year, but Father Rob and I can help you get started. We are still offering adult and youth Christian rites of initiation, so if you know someone who would like to become Catholic or wants to receive the rest of their sacraments, send them our way. The Divorce Recovery Program is a non-denominational eight-week session, and this is a great place to experience God's love while you hear and adapt to your new life as a divorced person. There's also help with annulments. Both Father and Rob and I can do that for you. Um, we'd love to help you through the process. Blessed Sacrament has been my home for over two decades. It is the place where I come to celebrate, to heal, to grow, and to work. It truly is my home, and because it's my home, that makes each and every one of you part of my family. So stop in to say hi and tell us a story or a joke. What do you have to celebrate or not celebrate? Ask me questions about my role in faith formation. I would consider it a privilege to lend you an ear or to have you lean on my shoulder or um, to, to celebrate you, to give you a little bit of a woohoo for whatever you have going on in your life. Um, I can't wait to meet you. The one thing I want you to take from the videos you've just watched and the presentations you've just seen is to be sure to take a bulletin, but please read it. <laughs> <laughs>